In this talk, I'm going to present a network-driven approach for genome-wide association mapping. <clears throat> I am Sengang Lee. This is joint work with Sun Ho Kong and Eric Singh. First, I would like to uh, uh, show our pr uh, problem, which is genome-wide association mapping. Here, we would like to find associations between SNPs and phenotypes, such as Alzheimer's disease status. Let me explain this with this small cartoon. Here we have three individuals with their disease status and their genotypes. Here we have two SNPs, and we would like to find which SNP is associated with this disease status. You can see that this SNP is associated with this disease status because sick individual has genotype G and health individuals have genotype T. In reality, this problem is much more complex and difficult because the number of SNPs that we consider is typically in the order of hundreds of thousands of mil or millions, and the number of samples is in the order of hundreds or thousands. Among many challenges in genome-wide association mapping, we would like to focus on one big challenge, which is this. Association mechanisms between SNPs and phenotypes are very complex. However, in a typical association mapping, we treat them as a black box. For example, DNA is transcribed into RNA, and RNA is translated into protein. Protein, in, in turn, affects the phenotypic variations. When you find, association, when you find mapping between SNPs and phenotype, Typically, we consider the phenotype is a linear combination of the pheno uh, SNPs, and if it's by uh, categorical valued phenotypes, we add logistic function on top of that. However, this oversimplifies the real biological mechanisms between SNPs and phenotypes. There are pr uh, previous approaches to address pa a part of this problem. For example, Zhang et al. proposed to use EQTLs to guide the search for causal SNPs to phenotypes. So they first perform the association mapping between SNPs and phenotypes, and then they choose SNPs only if the SNP is also EQTL. And another approach was from Curtis et al. They developed a tool for three-way association visualization. In this tool, they showed SNPs, gene expression traits, and phenotypes, and also they showed um, the association between any of these two, and then they allowed for biologists to inspect associations among three of them. However, to our knowledge, there is no systematic method that can model complex biological mechanisms between SNPs and phenotypes. To address the problem, we propose network-driven association mapping, or we call NITAM. NITAM adds intermediate variables into genotype-phenotype association mapping framework. Let me explain the uh, big picture using this cartoon. Here we have set of SNPs and set of phenotypes. We add intermediate variables, which is gene expression data in our case. And instead of looking for associations between SNPs and phenotypes, we first look for associations between SNPs and gene expression traits. And also we look for associations between gene expression traits and phenotypes. And then we find paths from SNPs to phenotypes to link between SNPs and phenotypes. In this particular example, we have this path, we have another path over here. And also, we allow for um, direct associations between SNPs and phenotype, and then we also, uh, add, we also allow for this type of association. And we call uh, this path, path association, because each path corresponds to a association between a SNP and a phenotype. 
Now you may ask, why want to use NITAM instead of using traditional genotype-phenotype association mapping techniques? As I said before, NITAM finds path associations. Therefore, we can introduce intermediate variables, which is gene expression data in our case, that allows, that can bridge the gap between SNPs and phenotypes. In our simulation study, such intermediate variables dramatically boost the performance of association mapping. For the simulation, we generated a very simple neural network where inputs are the SNPs and outputs are the phenotypes. And for the intermediate variables, we added a very simple hidden layer with a sigmoid function. And then we look for associations between SNPs and phenotypes uh, uh, for our simulation. And this is uh, a part of our simulation result. Uh, this is the ROC curve where x-axis represents the false positive rate and y-axis represents the true positive rate. Therefore, if the curve is closer to the top left corner, it is better. These two curves are for the NITAM with intermediate variables, and this is the, another curve for logistic regression with EQTL uh, approach with intermediate variables. And this, this is the result by linear mixed model without using intermediate variables. What, what, what I would like to uh, emphasize here is that using intermediate variables dramatically boosts the performance of association mapping. NITAM takes two-step approach. In the first step, we construct an association network using stability selection. You may use a single SNP approach for finding the associations, but we claim that stability selection performs better than single SNP analysis because it considers the old SNPs simultaneously when finding associations. Let me explain this with this uh, example. We consider the set of SNPs as input and consider the set of genes as output and we run stability selection and find association between these two sets. And then we assign the weights to edges using stability selection score. And then uh, we consider the set of genes as input and set of phenotypes as output and we, again we find association between them. And finally, also we find associations between SNP set of SNPs and set of phenotypes. So now we have association, ne association network where edges represent SNPs, gene expression traits, and phenotypes, and edges represents associations between a pair of nodes. In the second step, we find top K path associations. To do so, we first define a path score, which is simply multiplication of the scores on edges in the same path. And after that, using Yan's k shortest path algorithm, we find the top k path associations. After running NITAM, the final results look like this. We have a list of the path associations with assigned path score. Sometimes the uh, path association includes all SNP, gene trait, and phenotype, but sometimes it can also just SNP and phenotype. We applied NITAM on Alzheimer's disease data set from Harvard and Merck Research Laboratory. In this data set, we have about 500,000 SNPs with minorly frequency greater than 0.01. For gene expression traits, we had about 40,000 DNA probes, including known predicted genes, microRNA, non-coding RNAs in the cerebrum in the brain. And also for phenotype, we used Alzheimer's disease, 270 cases and 270 controls. Overall, NITAM identified 477 path associations, and only three, path, three associations could be identified 
by single selenium approach implemented in Plink at first discovery rate 0 0.05. And here is the uh, top 50 path, associ path associations found by NITAM in ArchMR's digits data set. In this graph, the smallest circle represents SNP, the mid-sized circle represents gene trait, and the largest circle represents uh, ArchMR's uh, disease status, phenotype. Interestingly, these three, these three clusters are related to nicotine pathway, beta amyloid pathway, and estrogen pathway all of these pathways were extensively studied in ArchMR's disease communities. In this talk, I'm going to briefly mention our results related to beta amyloid pathway because that's the most interesting to me. For beta amyloid related path, uh, path associations, we found 10, 23 SNPs are associated with zinc finger protein 720 gene, and this gene was associated with Alzheimer's disease status. In our literature survey, we found that zinc finger protein 720 is interacting with only APP gene. APP gene is amyloid precursor protein, which is very well known for Alzheimer's pathogenesis. Let me briefly explain what this gene is, is about. Here uh, the, we have APP molecule, which is attached to the cell. And when this molecule is cleaved by enzymes, we are going to have beta amyloid peptides. And beta amyloid peptides are very sticky molecule, and they tend to form clusters, which we call beta amyloid plaque. And it is known that if we have excessive number of beta amyloid plaque, it causes the damage in the brain. Now let me uh, look into a path association that includes RS675804 SNP, zinc finger protein 720 gene, and Alzheimer's disease status. This SNP was located 35 kilobase pairs downstream of IYD gene. And this, uh, the role of IYD gene is to detach iodine from certain types of the thyroid hormones. In our literature survey, we found that if IYD gene has defects, it resulted in low levels of T3 thyroid hormones. And also we found that Thyroid hormone T3 negatively regulates APP gene. <clears throat> Combine these two evidence, one of hypothetical association mechanism would be that IYD gene affects T3 thyroid hormone, and T3 thyroid hormone negatively regulates APP gene, and APP gene is associated with Alzheimer's disease status. To summarize, we propose NITAM, a network-driven approach for genome-wide association mapping. And we, in, in this framework, we introduced intermediate variables into genotype-phenotype association mapping. And we confirmed that intermediate variables dramatically boost the performance of association mapping. And also, we found biologically plausible genetic factors in Alzheimer's disease. Finally, I would like to mention that NITAM just opens the opportunity to model complex mechanisms between SNPs and phenotypes. And I believe that more work remains to be done in this direction of research. Finally, I would like to thank Sailing Lab at Carnegie Mellon University City, where I did my PhD, and also Wei Yu for uh, useful discussions. And also, I would like to thank Human Longevity Inc., my employer, to support this conference trip. Thank you for your attention. I will take, your, uh, I will take questions.